One reason why I don't like the term agnostic is because there are a lot of people who have appropriated this term to describe themselves and really these people are just professional fansitters. That's what I would call them. People who will refuse to ever make a definitive statement anyway, good, bad or indifferent, as soon as the term God comes into the picture. They refuse to be drawn to say anything, no matter how specific it gets, no matter how specific the God that is being described gets. And I'm not particularly fond of that. I'm of the opinion that once it becomes very specific, and once somebody's so-called God becomes something that is clearly impossible, then it is perfectly fair to turn around to that person and say your God does not exist. If somebody tells me that they believe in a God, I don't need to know what they really believe in. As soon as they start telling me things like that their God is, for example, omnipotent, at that point I can reject their God out of hand because omnipotence is a logically impossible attribute of anything including a so-called God. So it is refreshing then to come across somebody who calls themselves an agnostic and who understands that difference and who also understands that agnosticism is really about possessing knowledge. And of course I should also make the note at this point that agnosticism needs to be about something. We like to use agnostic as a shorthand for agnostic about the existence of God. But of course you can be agnostic on a number of things that you could conceivably possess knowledge of. So for example, there could be something like an agnostic theist who believes that there is a God but who declares themselves agnostic of the nature of that God, and so on and so forth. Now this particular person I was talking to was agnostic about the existence of God, so kind of a vanilla agnostic, so to speak. And what I liked about them was that they were not shy to accept that, for example, Yahweh doesn't exist or Allah doesn't exist, because these entities are fairly clearly described by their respective sets of believers and described in such a way that makes it clear that they are logically impossible and therefore they do not exist. Yahweh is supposedly omnipotent and so is Allah and omniscient. Same problem. Ask Kurt Gödel if you don't understand why. Anyway, when it came back to where it came back to the agnosticism is when we agreed to reject those gods. But what is left then? As a diatheist, I have pointed out on numerous occasions that given the fact that we reject named gods like Yahweh and so on, the term God, the three letter combination God, G-O-D, becomes a meaningless noise. And as long as it remains that, I'm not going to be drawn on even bothering to think about it, let alone making statements about it, or considering the possibility of its existence. Well, I don't know what a god is supposed to be, so don't ask me whether it can exist or not. The agnostic that I was talking to sort of followed me alright, but they kind of insisted on drawing me back into this, attributing some meaning to the word God, and of course resisting the temptation to make it specific, resisting the temptation to present a God image that equated to Yahweh or Allah, they eventually turned around and presented me with the term God as Creator thinking that, that would be sufficiently vague but still s sufficiently specific to make talking about it a possibility. 
and I rejected that as well. And this is what this video is about, so sorry for the very long rambling introduction, but now I'm going to get to the point. The term creator is a very heavily laden term. You see, this person wanted me to consider the existence of a creator, to think about it, and then to determine whether I would have to call myself an agnostic about it or whatever else. But I realized that by even contemplating the term, you are already accepting as true a number of a priori assumptions for which there is no justification whatsoever. And this is what I'm going to explain now. You see, the moment you start considering the possibility of the existence of a creator, you are laden by a number of problematic assumptions. By the moment you say, the moment you say, could there possibly be a creator, you have accepted that there is a creation. See the problem there. You have now accepted the assumption that there is something that was created and for which creation there needs to be an explanation. You're looking for an explanation. So that is the first thing that I want you to think about. Because what exactly would you propose is there that has been created? So it cannot be reality. Because reality is an all-encompassing term. It encompasses absolutely everything that ever is, was and will be, and that can be verified as being real. The problem with that is that if you look at reality, reality encompasses all time. And it doesn't matter whether we're talking about an infinite amount of time or a finite amount of time. If, for example, the observable universe is really all there is, if that, if that constitutes the whole of reality, even though there are very few people who still believe that, but let's say it is, well, that is 13.7 billion years old. In other words, reality then encompasses a total of no more than 13.7 billion years. And that is reality. That is all there is that encompasses all moments in time. In other words, if that is the case, there do not exist any moments in time in which reality couldn't be spoken of. And in other words, reality then is not something that could ever have been created because it was always there. See the problem there. See the problem with that basic assumption that there was a creation. Now, of course, you could argue that maybe it wasn't reality. Maybe it was a subset of reality, a smaller part of reality. For example, to return to this example that I, that I brought up already, the observable universe. Maybe that is what was created. But if that is the case, then it was created out of a larger reality. And then we need to look then we need to look very closely at what a term like creation actually means. You see, when do we ever speak of creation? We do not speak of creation when we consider the spontaneous appearance out of nothing of something. That is not what creation is. Look at what we actually label as creation. An artist, for example, creates a piece of art. A programmer creates a program. 
But in all these specific cases, we're talking about the production, the manipulation of something that is already there and reconfiguring it into a new configuration and it is that new configuration that is considered to be the creation. But then we do need to understand that it is only ever seen as a creation because there is something unique about this configuration. It is observed as being unique. It is observed as being something that didn't exist before. The materials at hand were manipulated and configured into this new entity. And we, the observers and the artists who created it, attribute meaning to the created entity, the thing that we consider to have been created. Until we do that, you simply cannot speak of the word creation. It is simply matter being reconfigured, being reassembled, being reorganized and so on, or even being transformed from matter into energy and vice versa. None of that makes any difference to the fact that all we're basically looking at is change and flux. It is not creation until we attribute meaning to it. Now I take that point back to the observation, first of all, that we should consider whether there was a creator. By simply saying that, like I said, we are making the assumption that there was a creation and if we do that then we are already assuming by simply considering this possibility we have already introduced as a a priori assumption that there was an intelligent an agent an entity a person that had the ability to attribute meaning to whatever it was they created and therefore you have already snuck in the concept of a god of some description under the radar without people noticing it and given that we have to consider that there is no evidence whatsoever none not a single bit of evidence that there is any larger meaning to for example something like the observable universe so we have a reality that could not have been created because it must by its very definition have already always existed and then we are considering a possible subset of reality that could have arisen and that by all means, by all levels of understanding that we currently possess, looks like it was most possibly the result of spontaneous, natural, simple flux, the sort of constant change that is part and parcel of what reality is anyway and therefore there is simply no justification whatsoever to look at reality to look at what we can observe of the universe as a creation at all given that it is completely and utterly pointless to start thinking about a creator to even introduce the concept into your thought at all and that is what I wanted to respond to my agnostic with which I have done by the way and be interesting to see if he will come back with any sort of response to that but that's neither here nor there the thing is if being an agnostic means that you should consider whether you do or do not know 
anything about a creator, then you have already introduced a belief in a God into your worldview. And that is something that I'm not willing to do. That is the sort of garden path that I will not allow myself to be let down. Thank you.